You know what they say, goodbyes are never easy. And today on this channel, we're gonna say goodbye to the Galaxy S22 Ultra. As we look back at nearly a year with this phone, you know, to me, this was the most complete phone I've ever used from the body, display, camera, and speakers. You know, there wasn't a single phone that would compete with this total package. Not saying this was a perfect phone or the best phone in any category, but find me a phone that did everything right, like this phone did. First, let's start with the build. This phone is built like a tank. It has rugged armor aluminum all around, and it's no joke. You know, I've dropped this phone a few times on accident, and also there was an occasion where my three-year-old chucked this phone across the kitchen. Don't get me started. So it has some wear on it, but it held up pretty well. Now, none of this was a direct face drop, but the screen is using Gorilla Glass Victus, which is really strong as far as cracks, but it does scratch a bit. So I do have some surface level scratches on this display, nothing that is hindering me from using it or nothing that you can see in direct sunlight. The display does have a curve to it, which a lot of people complain about, but for a phone this big, and it is big, you need to have somewhat of a curve to make it comfortable to fit in one hand. I will say day one, palm rejection wasn't great, and many times my palm would hit things that I didn't want it to hit, but with a few updates, it seems like that no longer happens, or maybe I adjusted my hand a little bit, I don't know. So moving on to the back, it is completely flat and the lenses just kind of pop out of it. I think it's kind of a cool look. You know, it's far from minimal since there's four lenses and a sensor, but it does have a simple feel to it, which I think looks good. Now beyond that, just a simple Samsung logo at the bottom, which is invisible unless you look at it at a certain angle. I love how the bottom is flat and squared off, which allows the phone to stand up by itself and makes it comfortable to hold in all orientations. Now using this phone as a gaming phone, it has been mixed. Yes, it runs games as fast as anything I've tested in 2022, and playing games like PUBG and Call of Duty Mobile works great and you add yourself in a controller, you got yourself a portable gaming system. It is that nice. But this chip does get hot after longer gaming sessions. If you play around 30 minutes, it starts to get warm. But if you play for about an hour, it is downright hot. And once you start to do something else after that hour, you would notice a slowdown, which is called throttling. This isn't something that I ran into organically, but it's something I ran into when I was doing testing. Look, I don't game that much on my phone, so I won't run into something like this, but for people who game a ton, this could be a real issue, and a lot of people were avoiding that chip for that specific reason. Now, day to day, this phone is an absolute rock star. Samsung's apps are solid, and the integration with Microsoft is a little boring, but it's useful. Now, I do work for a company that uses Office 365, and it feels native to this phone. So working in that type of environment has worked out great. Also, what's different from the last few years is that Samsung software gets out of the way when you want it to, and it's very useful when you need it, and it seems like it's integrated and not kind of in your face like it used to be. Now, I've been using Visible Mobile on this phone with 5G Ultra Wideband, and it has been rock solid day to day. I have another SIM in my phone with the same service and I never ran into any different any differences between this phone and another phone using the same service. I can routinely pull down some crazy speeds when testing it and also has Wi-Fi 6 capabilities so when I'm on a Wi-Fi connection at my house it is so fast there too. Now this camera system is the best when you're considering all things combined from features and lenses and all that stuff. Now the system definitely shines mostly outside with Samsung styling. This does not produce the most realistic image like a pixel would, but it produces sometimes the best and most fun looking images outside. Now when you add in the crazy zoom systems, you have yourself a killer camera. Night mode is solid as well and videos look great too. And also stabilization is really good on this phone. Overall, the camera system is just great. A few things I don't like about it, but after that, rock solid. I know this may sound a bit cringy, but when Apple does something on their iPhone, expect Samsung to do it, and that could be true both ways. But I've noticed it more with Samsung, and I welcome it. There's been a lot of new features added with Android 13 plus One UI, and honestly, I haven't dug into the, all of them just yet, but I find little nuggets like, oh, that's pretty cool, you know, every time I use the phone. When it comes to the S23 Ultra, expect another update to bring some of those features to the S22, and that happens every single year. 
So it's gonna feel like a brand new phone really soon. There's also an S Pen that takes this thing from a phone to a downright productivity beast. You know, giving you access to write on the screens, mark up documents, mark up screenshots, or anything else you may want to do. I'm not big on the S Pen, not because it's nothing I want to use, but it's nothing I need to use. I don't feel like I'm missing out. But I do know some people that are gung-ho and live and die with the S Pen. And for those people, they gotta have an S22 Ultra. Overall, after one year, this phone is nothing short of amazing. The S23 isn't going to bring any major changes to the table that will make you want to update, or I guess make you need to update. But those are my thoughts. I wanna know what yours are. Sound off down below, and make sure you hit subscribe to my channel. I will be having more videos coming out really soon. Kevin the Tech Ninja, have a wonderful day. Peace.